Hey everybody, 40 Sparky here. I thought I'd do a little tutorial tonight about one of the features I've discovered about the Nikon PB6 Bellows that isn't that commonly known. And I happened to actually discover this quite by accident a few days after I purchased my PB6. What I did when I got interested in getting this bellows is I purchased a good used Nikon AIS 28mm f2.8 strictly kind of dedicate to this bellows and macro photography thing. And like most people, I mounted the lens, if I can get it to mount, in the normal position. And was reading in the, I'm going to take this bottom mechanism off so it will sit flat and not fall over. This is the way most people would use it, and you can get, I can't remember the figure, up to like 3.7 or 3.8 to 1 magnification when you run this, your bellows all the way out to maximum extension. But a lot of macro users know that you can get more magnification and a better image quality when you reverse the lens. In order to do that, I purchased a Nikon BR2A. And the BR2 simply means that there's a filter thread on here that threads into the front of the lens just like an ordinary filter. And then mounts onto the bellows. The only problem with this is now your aperture ring turns freely. There's nothing to control this mechanism, this little lever down here, to open and close the aperture. Well, they do make a device to do that that you could put on here, and it mimics the uh, mechanism that's inside the camera to do that. But one day I was working with this, and get the lens off of here. I was working with this and I was wondering what these two little knobs on the side were for. They didn't seem to be doing anything. They just were there. And then I noticed the little arm in here that actuates the lever in here on the lens for the aperture was moving ever so slightly when I moved these. And I thought, well, maybe I've got a defective unit here. Maybe they, uh, this, whatever this is, is broken. I didn't have a mechanical cable release, but I was able to find a small wire. I pushed it down in there. That didn't make any difference. I got looking at this mechanism. So how am I going to get into this? Because I don't see any screws. Well, then I noticed this little knob on the side here, and I wondered what that was for. And it was quickly discovered that that's what removes this front piece from the bellows. So I immediately loosened this up and spun it around and noticed that there is a ring here with four screws in it and a plate with four screws in it and a little groove here that obviously goes with the cable release. And I could sit here and move this out of the way. I don't know if this will show up, but you can see that aperture, this little arm right here, that actuating lever, moving ever so slightly. So I knew these knobs had something to do with this, but it wasn't allowing me to open the lens. The lens would stay closed at whatever aperture I chose. They didn't do anything. So being the curious type and, and somewhat mechanically inclined, I thought, well, if this mechanism is, is messed up, I can't hurt it anymore. So I got a jeweler screwdriver set out and I removed this ring and underneath where this actuating lever is is another ring that has another lever that goes down into a cam mechanism that basically was trying to do this but was stuck. It was only moving just a little bit which translates into a very small movement of this lever. So I thought well okay I'll continue and I'll take these four screws out and I fully expected little parts and pieces and spring-loaded things to fly out of there, but I didn't. There's simply a rod across here, but from this knob to this knob, with a couple of springs on it. 
and it didn't take me too long to figure out that there's not they're not broken they're just pushed in when you pull out on them they're released just like that now that actuator moves absolutely freely so now this is very common I'm sure to a lot of people who use these bellows now you've got control of your aperture. You can either hold it down and somehow take the photograph with your camera or push it down and in and now your aperture stays there. So if you're going to do like a focus stack, when you're done you simply pull it out the aperture comes back up. But that isn't the feature that I wanted to highlight in this video. The feature I wanted to highlight is as I was looking at this ring I noticed what appeared to be filter threads. Just like there's filter threads inside of this front element of the lens, there's filter threads here. And lo and behold, yes, here's a standard 52 millimeter filter that threads right in. In fact, that's a filter. It's an old skylight filter. And to prove that, here is the BR2A with the 52 millimeter threads in it. And look at that. So I thought, well, now wait a minute. If this is the same as this, why can't I take this, mount it on here, and instead of going this way, Mount it in reverse. And lo and behold, now I have a reversed lens in which I have control over my aperture, either with my left or my right hand. I've got to stop down to, well, let's say, f11 right now, but it's wide open. Now the lens is closed. And if I want to take a photograph, I can simply hold that button down, take the photograph on the camera, or push it in. It stays down. The aperture is closed down. Now I can use my mirror up function on my camera, or a tethered option, take the photograph, and leave it there if I want to do a focus stack, or open the aperture again to compose another photograph. So that's one feature that really isn't in the manufacturer's manual about this particular model of bellows. I just happened to stumble across it by looking at this and if I wanted to I could actually still put a filter right there. So if you're interested in getting into a reverse lens bellows this is one feature of the PB6 that will do it even without a BR2A or a BR6 or even a cable release. You still have control of your aperture either in a single situation or multiple photographs. With that said, this is 480 Sparky. Go forth and actuate.